uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you are watching this from. Uh, I welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is me, Jamie Naftali, again uh, in another episode. Uh, this channel is all about kids' welfare, medical problems, and we try finding solutions. So if you're new, uh, please be that returning subscriber. Hit on the subscribe button so that you can be part of this wonderful family. So remember the main aim here is uh, to create the awareness uh, to the caregivers, to the guardians, to everybody on common illnesses affecting children while growing up. So welcome into today's episode and we are continuing on malnutrition, the malnutrition in children. So today we are going to treat malnutrition. How do we go about treatment? So uh, just an overview, um, just a reminder for you to continue treating, uh, you should have done the ABC. Remember the ABC approach whereby we want to check the airway, breathing, circulation. You want to assess all this to see uh, for you to be sure now this is malnutrition and you want to go on and treat it. So this is the ABC where if you find this baby's unconscious, this one uh, is something to tell you. Then the MOAC, remember our last episode on the mid upper arm circumference, the ones, the one that is the mostly used one in um, classifying malnutrition. So if the MOAC is below 11.5 centimeters, so we want to go ahead and treat. Um, the Z score, remember the Z score that is, it is used, uh, the weight for height, it is the one that is called the Z score. And this one is used in the children below six months. So if we have edema, uh, edema, the whole body, uh, other signs of kwashiako, we have uh, things like we mentioned, the flaky paint, uh, dermatitis, that the skin changes, all that, that will tell you now, this is malnutrition and you want uh, to go on and treat. So that was just an overview reminder because we had said all these things earlier. So how do we go about treating malnutrition in children? So when we are treating malnutrition, uh, we use uh, 10 steps. We have 10 steps in while treating malnutrition. You have to pass by every step, the 10 steps, so that we are sure that this child with malnutrition is well treated. So step number one. Uh, these children are prone into having something we call hypoglycemia. This is not new to you. Remember the hypoglycemia, we covered it, the low blood sugar levels. And um, so these children, remember, they don't have their immunity. Uh, the immunity is very low. They are immunocompromised. Their immunity is very, very low. So they are prone into having low blood sugar levels. And when do we say that we have low sugar levels in children with malnutrition? If you measure the random blood sugar and you find that it is below 3 minimals per liter. When we were covering hypoglycemia in the, that episode, uh, we said hypoglycemia in a normal child. A normal child is uh, when uh, the measurement, when the random blood sugar is below 2.5 minimals per liter. But here... When we have malnutrition, we take it seriously. It is a bit higher. We are saying in malnutrition is when the random blood sugar is below three minimals per liter. Hope you get the difference. So how do we, you have checked the, the sugar levels and you find that uh, this child with malnutrition, the sugar levels are below three minimals. How do you proceed from there? So you want to give uh, a dextrose. Remember, we say the best dextrose percentage is 10% dextrose. So you want to give five minimals, I mean, five meals, five meals per kg. In all cases, in treat, when treating children, we go by kg. So we do five meals uh, per kg of 10% uh, dextrose. Remember, we say it is the most uh, the most preferred one in children. So, uh, and if, how about if the glucose test is unavailable, you don't have the machine, the glucometer to do the random blood sugar levels. So you treat this hypoglycemia in a child, you 
Assume there is hypoglycemia in malnutrition and you don't have something to measure to see that it is below three minimals per liter. So you should go on and treat if this child is not alert. What are we saying here? If you find that the child is unconscious, that's why we were saying the ABC approach. If you find the child is unconscious, you don't have the glucometer to measure the sugars and you have malnutrition, this child is unconscious, you should go on and treat hypoglycemia. I hope this is very, very clear. Um, oral or uh, nasogastric uh, tube glucose uh, should come in uh, immediately the child is able to take orally. That is, it should not take more than 30 minutes after admission. So you start with the, the IV, 10% uh, uh, dextrose, but after within 30 minutes we are we are hopeful that this child will be able to uh, to feed. So you give, um, you feed the baby uh, and also you can do the nasogastric tube. So this is the NG tube. Remember, this is a tube that is used to feed babies, those who are not able to, to take orally. So you, you take a tube, it's a tube that is put uh, to the nose through the throat and to the stomach so that this uh, child is able to feed. So this is it. That is step one. Step one, we are saying the children with malnutrition are, are most probably going to have hypoglycemia and we have said how to treat it. Now let's proceed to step number two. Remember, we are saying the 10 steps in treatment of uh, malnutrition. So as uh, step two, what do we go, uh, what do we treat? We treat something we call hypothermia. Remember the hypothermia? This is low temperatures. And when do we say that we have low temperatures in these babies with uh, severe acute malnutrition? Uh, we said if we do the axillary uh, temperature and they are below 35 degrees Celsius. So we put the uh, our thermometer here uh, under the uh, at the axilla. And if we measure and it is below 35 degrees, uh, degrees Celsius, we say this is hypothermia. So how do we go about it? We find that we have hypothermia, low um, low temperatures. Who are do, they're going to be weighed down by this hypothermia, so we need to do something. Uh, so we go on, we keep the child warm, we provide the, uh, the blankets, uh, we even put heaters in the, in the rooms. In, in hospital setups where we have incubators, so incubators also come in, we want to provide that heat, we want to provide this warmth so that these children are not brought down by this hypothermia, the low uh, uh, temperatures. So I hope this is clear. So this is our number two, our step two is treating hypothermia, low uh, temperatures. How about step three? Step three, uh, these children are prone into having dehydration. It's like we are revising people. Remember, we had episodes on all this. We had episodes also on dehydration. So we want to treat this uh, dehydration. Remember, we said children with malnutrition uh, usually have uh, get they get episodes of diarrhea and vomiting, and in return we get dehydration. So it is going to weigh them down. And we may even end up having shock. Remember the shock? So the circulatory collapse. So what do we do? Uh, if this child is in shock, uh, then remember the signs of to show you that we have circulatory collapse. So their peripheries, uh, the, the end of, the, of their hands and feet are going to be very, very cold. We call it um, a cold peripheries. And also, uh, like cold uh, hands, also we say absent pulse, there is no pulse, so this child most probably, and they are also unconscious, these children most probably are having shock. So we use IV fluids here when you're treating shock in malnutrition, we use uh, IV uh, fluids and mostly we, we use, the best one is Ringer's lactate. So this is how we are going to treat shock. How about Children with uh, malnutrition, they don't have shock, but we have dehydration. How do we go about it? So here we are going to use a specific solution that we call Resomal. Resomal, just from the word, this means 
a rehydration solution in malnutrition, the resomal. This is the specific. We are not going to use the IV fluids, others, the ring as lactate, because we are going to see uh, we have sugar, there, there are different uh, sugar levels in uh, in Ringer's lactate, comparing it to, to Resomal. So we are saying Resomal is the best, uh, it is be the best solution to use in treatment of dehydration in malnutrition. Hope this is clear. And how much do we give? We give 10 mils again per kg per hour for two hours. So we are giving this prehydration solution for malnutrition. We are giving 10 mils per kg of the child per hour within two hours. We give within two hours. Then um, we after two hours, we give 7.5 mils per kg. Now we switch from 10 mils. We switch to 7.5 mils per kg over one hour. And here now we start introducing, um, we start introducing the fast feed. And this we call F75. We are going to see that the F75 is what we introduce. So we keep alternating. We keep alternating the rest of month each hour with this uh, fast feed, which is F75. So we give for one hour. Uh, for one hour, we give Resomal at 7.5 min, uh, mils per kg, per kg. Then the other hour, we give the first fluid, which is F75. And we alternate for the next 10 hours. Hope this is clear. We started with the Resomal 10 mils per kg and we give for two hours. Then we reduce into 7.5 mils per kg per hour. We alternate with the first feed, which you are saying it is F75. So we just don't treat dehydration like the other children. Remember, we said we talked about treatment of dehydration in a normal child, a child with no malnutrition. So I hope this is very clear. So after 10 hours now, we, we are saying we alternate for the up to 10 hours. Then at 12 hours, we switch to our three hourly oral uh, feeds. Then another point to note, uh, when we were treating shock, if these children are worse and you find that you do the HB, the HB is what we measure to see the blood levels. So you find that the HB is below 4 grams per deciliter. So you don't use the IV fluids, we say for shock. You, what you do, you transfuse. You give uh, you do blood transfusion. That is, if the HB, if the HB is below four grams per deciliter, so you don't give the IV fluids. You transfuse when you do the HB, the blood levels. So I hope that I hope this one is very clear, my people. So stay tuned for the next episode. This is the end of today's episode. We have started treating malnutrition, and we are going to continue from here. So far, we have done three steps. Three steps out of the 10 steps in treatment of malnutrition. So we have seven more to come in our next episode. Don't miss out. Please, if you have any question, uh, pin it down on the comment section. Ask anything concerning this. Also, there's my email at the end. Thank you so much for those who are sending me emails for the questions. Uh, I do not take it for granted. Thank you for your support. For those who have subscribed, thank you so much. If you haven't, please hit on the subscribe button so that you may be part of this wonderful family. Our main aim here is to have healthy babies. We also want to improve their quality of life. So thank you so much. Till next time.